Today's topic is how do you communicate with the unseen therapist? Here we have this, this sort of invisible, great communicator, actually, but doesn't communicate like sitting down talking to us over breakfast. Okay. <laughs> Communicates in a variety of ways. And, and my guest today is Dr. Marion Billich, psychologist, who has a lot of experience with this. And she's going to share with us, you know, some of her own experiences, and we'll just explore this in some in some detail. So welcome, Marion. Hi, everybody. Hi. So how do you communicate with the unseen therapist? How do you do it? Well, the unseen therapist is always communicating with us. It's just being open to getting those messages. Yeah, we're not always listening. That's the yeah. point. <laughs> our ego's going on and on with all the chat. Our mm -hmm. ego, our ego knows what's mm -hmm. best. And our ego doesn't want, want to be bothered with, you know, some other woo-woo thing from outside. Yes. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, somehow I have yeah. to get these messages. So, please. Carry well, on. what happens actually is when I'm working with people with optimal EFT and they'll work on the personal peace procedure and use the the unseen therapist as a, a way of healing the specific events from the past and uh, perhaps they're using um, the idea of the unseen therapist to heal physical pain uh, or an illness. But at some point, most of the people reach a realization I could talk to the unseen therapist. I don't just have to do specific events with her. Could I talk to her? Could I have a conversation with her? And at that point, I'm usually thrilled because yes, that's the whole point is to be able to have this dialogue with her and she can guide you through your life. And she's always there, always ready to help. You just have to ask, just like you have to ask her for healing uh, for physical pain. Well, you have, you have to ask and listen, okay? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, yes. Those are two different issues, and the yeah. listening one is, is the more difficult. Yeah. Um, and for a lot of reasons, sometimes it's difficult to listen because uh, you don't necessarily like what you're going to hear. <laughs> like, you kind of know that I'm not going to want to hear this, or, um, or you don't, uh, you're fearful or you don't trust that you really could hear her voice and how do I know? So there's lots of reasons, but since the people I'm talking about have had experiences talking to the unseen therapist about healing specific events or healing physical ailments, they already have begun to build a trust that, all right, she can help me. And um, there was one woman I had told you about, she had done the personal peace procedure she had over 200 events from her life she'd been through a lot and she had worked on all of them and really felt a lot of peace now this woman also had multiple sclerosis ms and as she was doing this work her the symptoms of ms had remitted she was in remission she didn't have any symptoms and she was really doing well she was feeling better but she said she had this persistent depression throughout her life that never completely went away. And she said one day, I'm feeling better physically, but the depression is still there. Could I just talk to the unseen therapist? Could I ask her to help me or ask her why I'm depressed? And that was a huge breakthrough. I was thrilled. Inside, I was doing a dance because I was so happy she got there. <laughs> and, and she started talking to the unseen therapist in the sessions with me and asking questions about the depression and not only specific events, but also what do I need to do to pull myself out of this? What might be different in my life? What might I might be afraid of in allowing myself to be happy? And as she did this work with me, she slowly started to do the work with the unseen therapist on her own between sessions. And that was really the goal is to have that dialogue, to have that open discussion and openness to the unseen therapist, not only when she's in my office, but yeah. during the week. But the, the question that arises, Marion, how do you get these 
messages. I mean, the, does the unseen therapist write you a letter and say, "Dear Marion, you know, here's here's the here," and you read the letter? Does it come in that in that fashion? How does it come? It How does it show up? Okay, it shows up in many many different ways. Too many for us to get into right now. Well, um, let's let's try a few. Okay. okay. Uh, sometimes it will come in the form of something written. It might be something you read. You're suddenly reading something and. Uh, like, for instance, I had an experience um, where I was very upset about something. I can't even remember what it was. It was a few weeks ago. And I couldn't find the solution to a problem. And I went to my computer, and here was a website on my computer that I don't remember pulling up. But in that, on that website was the answer to my question. Mm -hmm. um, it was just there. Yeah. So it could be something like that. Um, yeah, we have... We have I'm sorry. Did I... Go ahead. Okay. Um, in our advanced course, of which you're a member, we have a one of our advanced lessons this is lesson number 10. And it, it's got an actual metaphor. We call it the TV guidance channel technique to teach newcomers, you know, to start asking questions and getting answers. Right? And it takes practice. But once you get that skill down, it's an essential skill. Uh, I want you to talk in a few minutes because you, you did this like for a week with unseen therapists and you had a lot mm -hmm. of good stuff, but we'll get to, we'll get to, we'll get to that. In, we'll get to that in a moment, but you will, we, we teach people how to ask, but then when I, I'll give you my own example. When I ask, sometimes I will get an answer right there. It, it, to me, it comes in the form of an, it's a notion or I, I I'll, I'll hear some words or I'll, I'll see a little vision of something and it's a clue. And then I'll write, I'll, I'll write it down and I'll discuss it with the client or discuss it with myself if it's for me and, and so on. But other times, and you alluded to this, I may get some you know, answers during when I'm at, when I'm asking, but sometimes apparently I'm not ready for all the answers. An unseen therapist knows that. So later on, I'll be having a conversation maybe with you and you will say something and some phrase you say like stands out in all capital letters, or I see something on television and somebody says, there's my answer. Oh yeah. And it comes in all these different, different ways. It's not like you're sitting across the breakfast table, as I said early in my introduction, having some conversation. So it's almost like you have to start developing your own communication channels because she's going to communicate with you in ways that fit for you at times that fit for you because she may have to wait for your readiness to hear it. Anyway, yes. that's my that's my thought. <laughs> and it, on. May, it may differ at different times. Sometimes you might hear words in your head. Um, sometimes it might be uh, an image that pops in your head or a song. And, and sometimes, yes, you're not quite ready. One time I remember asking the unseen therapist about a problem I was having. And I asked her, what do I, I need to work on? And she showed me a picture of myself at three different ages. They were all through childhood, but three different ages. And I had not a clue what that meant. Not, not, I didn't know what it meant. So I asked her. And she said, you're not ready for the answer. So think about those three ages and what was going on and keep working on it and you will be ready. So that's what I did. And it took about a week of thinking about what those ages meant and what was happening. And then it started to dawn on me. It had to do with feelings of that I had to please people at certain ages. And, but I wasn't ready for the answer when she first gave it to me. So she yeah. gave it to me as very clearly to her, <laughs> but I had to do some digging and some work in order to figure out what it meant. It's almost like sometimes you need to do that and she'll give you a partial clue. Yeah. Uh, because you need to somehow or other get your, get your own aha out of it. Yes. You know, so I talked a, a minute ago, Marion, about your week long episode. Yes. Talk about that, could you? Well, to me, being able to communicate with the unseen therapist and to be connected to her is an ongoing goal for me. It's it's very important in my life. And I I try 
to connect to her as much as possible for guidance, for a feeling of peace. And one week, and this was a couple of years ago when I was pretty much starting out in one of my practice groups, I had this experience of feeling connected to the unseen therapist all the time, all day. I just felt her presence. I felt connected. I got information from her. I, any aches and pains that I'd been having were gone. I wasn't disturbed by things. And just as many disturbing things happened that week as happens any other week, but I, nothing bothered me. And I went through this week, it was wonderful. And then it disappeared and I couldn't get back there again. Um, and I, I still haven't gotten back there, but knowing that I had that is important to me to know that I can experience that. That is a possibility. So. Yeah, I've dealt with many people. I've had conversations with many people who have had spiritual experiences like I've had my, my brief wow that's written in my book and by the way anybody who hasn't read my book there's a link to it at the bottom you know below this video and in the essential links area um but you know i've had lots of conversations with them and i, I remember there was in fact one of the recordings that's even in that book is a lady that had a similar experience what you just talked about but for two weeks and then it left again and this it, it came back another time her name is sally and then left again and so on and we don't really know why it comes and then goes. I, I don't really know why I had my extraordinary spiritual experience that was very brief, minutes. Mm. Um, I don't know why I didn't stay there. I can, only, I can only assume that there's something about it that is just too ominous. Too, I'm not ready to be there permanently. And so, you know, I got this glimpse, you know, but now we're back here running around inside this illusion <laughs> of a separated body. We want to get back to the oneness, but anyway, we don't have that answer. Uh, I can only think we're not ready for it yet permanently. Okay. Yes. But if we can all get there, by the way, that will solve every problem this world has. Yeah. All the political problems, all the war problems, all everything, all every, every problem. Let me mention something else. A lot of newcomers to this, and in fact, some people that um, are more than newcomers, been around it a while, still want to be able to communicate with the unseen therapist and don't realize they've already done it. Okay. But let me tell you what I mean by that. Okay. We have in my book, even though it's an intro book, a at the end of it, something called the personal peace procedure. It's a process where you develop a specific event of your own, something that from your past that still gets you a little charge on it. You know, as you remember, maybe you're an eight or something like that. <laughs> then you bring an unseen therapist and you see what happens to the eight. Well, even, a, even as beginners, although you may not get success on every one you do, you'll get some successes on some. You'll go from eight to a five or eight to a two or eight to a zero or something like that. Okay. You don't realize that what you just did was communicate with the unseen therapist. Think about it for a minute. You're not, you're not using English or, or verbal words, okay? But you're basically with this process saying, look, I've got this in intensity on this past specific event, you know, and I don't, I'm guilty or angry or fearful or whatever about it to an eight. Please help me out. That's, that's basically what you, what you're doing to simplify it. Afterwards, you look at it and now it's a, a two or a zero or something. Mm -hmm. Unseen therapist heard your request and answered it. <laughs> okay. And that's actually pretty dramatic when you think about it, but it's not the kind of conversation you think you would have if you were communicating. All right. Yes. So <laughs> I, I presume you've seen the evidence of that over and over again, Mary. Oh yeah. I am thinking of one woman I worked with the first time we worked with the unseen therapist. She was at a 10 on her issue, whatever it was. I don't remember. And we did the work with the unseen therapist and I, 
I ask that that healing love come through her body and calm her body down. And anyway, when we finished, the woman said it didn't work. <laughs> Nothing happened. So I said, okay, well, let's look at the issue you brought up and how do you feel about it? Oh, that's gone. <laughs> that's, that's not there anymore. But nothing happened. <laughs> so, so she didn't realize that she was better. It was no longer a 10. It was a zero. Thank you for that. They say nothing happened. Well, a lot <laughs> happened, but what they're thinking, and this is one of the one of my communication problems in trying to teach all of this, because even though I say otherwise in my book and the instructions and everything else, that you don't need to have this Hollywood moment happen. You don't have to have this warm feeling and all the fuzzies and everything else in order for it to work. It worked beautifully from 10 to zero in your example. But it was something like if you swallow an aspirin, you don't get a Hollywood moment. But you, if your headache goes away, it goes away. <laughs> okay, yeah. you got a result, and in this case, you got a in case you're talking about. You got a dramatic result, but nothing happened. Well, a lot did. Okay, so communicating with the unseen therapist is is among other things. Um, we need to pay attention to what's happening and realize we are communicating even though it doesn't seem that way. Yes. All right. All right. Thank you. Marion, do you have anything else you want to mention before we, before we go? Just briefly, one of the things you said reminded me that when I'm working with children and we bring in the unseen therapist, they don't have all of the beliefs and all of the stuff that we've gone through that would get in the way of, of, allowing communication with the unseen therapist or healing from the unseen therapist. So I might be working with a child and we'll go in with the unseen therapist and 10 seconds later, she's, she'll say, okay, I'm done. It's gone. And even when I do testing to see, is it still there? And then I the next se session I'll ask, it's gone. It's just so quick with a child. So it makes you wonder what it what what it is that slows that process down for us, either the communication or the healing. But well, a child, you know, a child hasn't had their imagination thwarted <laughs> like 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 growing up tends to do with our imaginations. You know, they believe in angels and fairies and things like that, and they're and they're fun things. And so you bring it, you can bring in an angel instead of unseen therapists, which might be, you know, too. Oh yeah, I always change word. the name. I, yeah. I use a name with my granddaughter, who's a dancer. It's the magic dancer. The magic uh, dancer. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. I always okay. use a word that's meaningful to to them. Yeah. But it's just amazing how quickly they can communicate, how they get answers, how they get healing. It makes you think about: Could I be more like that? <laughs> We need we need to revert ourselves back, I think, in, in a lot of different ways. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, Marion, with 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 big gratitude, thank you. Thank you for your wisdom. Uh I, I wanna I wanna remind everybody for if you want more about all of this, look at the essential links, you know, down below this video and we'll see you next time.